transmission line part here and we'll move on to uh, slice show. Yeah. So uh, good evening and welcome to yet another online tutorial on microwaves and antennas. Right. So we are in uh, single step matching right, uh, of transmission line using switch chart. Right. So yesterday we discussed the relevant uh, theory. Right. But uh, if, even if you didn't understand anything, not a problem. Right. So I, while solving this problem, I hope it will be clear to you. Right. So single step matching, right? Single step matching is nothing but what you have a transmission line. Right. I'll quickly recap and I'll write down the equations of every, everything here again. That you have a transmission line, right? Who's terminated at load impedance ZL and it has some characteristic impedance Z0, right? So then uh, this was the question of yesterday, right? I'm not showing that again, right? So then. Single step matching means at a distance D from the transmission line, what you should do is you should connect a short circuited step, right? At a distance D from the load end. So what is D? Right. At a distance D from the load end, you should connect a short circuited step. So this is actually what short circuited step, right? Of length, uh, length L, right? Short circuited step of length L, right? And the characteristic impedance of this step will be actually what I'll call it Z naught S, right? So this this is one transmission line, and this step was actually what another transmission line. So they may or may not have same characteristic impedance. So we'll assume characteristic impedance of the line is Z naught, right? Characteristic impedance of the step was actually what Z naught S, right? So what we need to do is by connecting a short circuit step of length L at a distance d from load n what we need to do is we should make the impedance i'll call if i call this port actually what port 11 right i should make the impedance z11 as seen by this port to be equal to actually what to be equal to z0 right i need to make this z11 to be equal to z0 for that what i am doing i am connecting a short circuited step this step will contribute some impedance Say I'll call it actually what ZS, right? Impedance of the step was ZS and impedance of this line, if I'm calling it as ZD, right? So when I connect a ZS in parallel at point D, right, I should get the impedance Z11 as seen from this point to be equal to characteristic impedance. That is actually what single step matching. So once again, I'll write the relevant expression, right, equations, right? So yesterday those who missed out, right, can right. So what happens is this Z11, that is what what is Z11 actually? Z11 is nothing but what the ZD and ZS they are in parallel. So I can write ZD parallel to ZS, and this must be made, must be, must be actually what Z0, right. This must be equal to Z0, right? This must be equal to Z0. Z11, that is ZD parallel Z dash should be equal to Z0, right? So when we are when we have two impedances in parallel, how we will find out the um, resultant impedance? It's actually what we can we know. One by Z11 will be equal to one by ZD plus one by Z dash, right? So if I if I call it equation number one, right? 1 by Z11 will be equal to 1 by ZD plus 1 by ZS, right? And we know, right, reciprocal of impedance is actually what admitted. So I can write, right, uh, this Y11, 1 by Z11 I am writing as Y11, that is equal to YD plus YS. And also, one second, right, so I should write, this should be equal to actually what, this should be equal to 1 by Z0, this should be equal to 1 by Z0, right? So this is equation number 1 I am calling. So I am writing Y11 is equal to YD plus YS, and that should be equal to 1 by Z0. I can write actually what? Y0. So this is the condition. So when two, right, uh, when YD and YS are added in parallel, uh, in, included in parallel, that should be equal to actually what? Y11. So now I am going to actually what? Rewrite it in terms of normalized impedance right so normalized impedance a small y11 that will be equal to capital y11 divided by y0 right 
and small y d it will be equal to capital y d divided by y naught and small y s small y s is actually what capital y s divided by y naught s why because this y one one and y d are impedance on line one line these two are uh, admittances of line one and this is of line two line two has a different characteristic impedance and different characteristic admittance right so where y not will be equal to 1 by z not and y not s will be equal to 1 by z not s right so i can rewrite equation number 2 as i can rewrite equation number 2 as y11 into y not this is equal to yd into y not all of you please take down along with me yd into y not plus ys into y not s and this should be equal to actually what one into sorry uh, this should be equal to one into say y not or this should be equal to y not right y not is y not as such right so now right the question is what should be this y d right what should be this y d what should be this y s right and also right we should know Right, so impedance matching problem is actually what finding this D. Right, the problem is finding this D and this L. Right, we have to if given a short circuited step, what should be the length of the step and at what distance I should connect that. That is actually what the impedance matching problem. So, what are given here? So, in this given R, right, R naught is given that is characteristic impedance of line 1 is given then load impedance is given load impedance is given then characteristic impedance of line 2 is given right we should find the step position right closest to the load and step length these are the two things which you have to find so maybe i should use some other color here right this is something which we have to find step position which is closest to the load and step length this is what we have to find that is we should find d and we should find L. Right. So now we start solving the problem. So step one, maybe I'll write step by step. Right. So step one is step one of any impedance matching problem will be find a normalized right. Normalized load admittance. No load admittance. small y l right so given what is given actually given z l is equal to 50 divided by 2 plus j 2 plus root 3 right ohm this is given and z naught is equal to actually what z naught is equal to 50 ohm it is given so from this how to find y l small y l right small y l is nothing but what 1 by small z l, 1 by normalized, right? So this is normalized impedance, right? 1 by small z l. So what will be small z l? Maybe we can find small z l first. Normalized impedance, small z l is equal to capital Z l divided by z naught, right? So that is equal to z capital z l is 50 by this divided by z naught will be 1 by right 2 plus j 2 plus root 3 is actually what 2 plus root 3 is okay i'll write 2 plus root 3 only then i'll rewrite 2 plus root 3 this is normalized impedance can anyone tell me what is this this is 1 by 2 plus j times is it 3.732 yes, right. 3.732 this is normalized impedance so that that is normalized impedance so if you know what is actually what this is equal to small r plus j small x if you know what is r and x you can locate the normalized impedance point right then normalized admittance point will be diametrically opposite point but in this case we don't know what is directly small r and small x but it is easier for us to find out the reciprocal right so yl will be yl is 1 by zl that is equal to actually what 2 plus j 3.732 right so this is 
the first step calculating normalized admittance right so we have calculated normalized admittance and we'll now go and mark it on switch chart yesterday right we have done that part again once i'll do right so again a uh, geo gibra geo gibra uh, calculator suit right so uh, if if you have any friends from other colleges and all right did you ask or by any way actually what there was a discussion how they are dealing with this switch chart problems and all right why we have better things to discuss right why we should discuss about microwave and antenna when we have right any any, any idea just try to find out if if there is a better way right if there is a better way skip switch chart okay but okay maybe um, okay uh, right so maybe they are waiting it to take uh, take it up in actually what uh, live class it was uh, offline session not a problem right okay um, fine yeah so i'll just uh, change the background color settings and color. okay right then image choose file from my desktop right smith chart jpeg image right i opened it right so then now i should move it down a bit right so what was our point i should mark the point right i'll write here um i should mark the point right y l is equal to 2 plus j what was the point can anyone tell me i don't want to go back to the other page 3.732 yes sir 3.732 so this is what we have to mark right so um small g is 2 right and b is 3.7 so we are using it as admittance chart right so that is something which you have to keep in mind we are we have to use mic chart as admittance chart right admittance chart if it is at used as admittance chart right short circuit and open circuit point will interchange that is right short circuit and open circuit point will interchange right r constant r circuits will become constant g circuits right short circuit and open circuit point will interchange constant r circuit will be constant g circuits and constant uh, uh, x circuits will become constant b circuits right so g equal to 2 is actually what r equal to 2 circuit so this is actually r equal to 1 and this is r equal to 2 right if you can see this this is actually what r equal to 2 circuit right r equal to 2 circuit and x equal to plus 3.732 so it will be above so this is 2 3 and this is 4 right so this is 3.2 3.4 3.6 and 3.8 so it will be in between that right so 3.2 3.4 uh, 6 right and this is 3.8 so in between that will be actually what i think this is the point right i'll what i'll do is i'll take a i'll take a point from this and i'll mark that so this is x equal to 2 and this will be actually what 3.7 right so i'll mark it here i'll mark the point here right point c is our actually what the admittance point so we mark point c that is our admit point so i'll write c is oh, oh, oh sorry uh hold there right um i'll writing part i'll uh, do at the end together right so the i i have marked it next what we have to do next i can draw a constant swr circle right constant standing wave ratio circle for that okay before that i can mark the center as well right i'll mark the center as well i mark the center right so then i am going to take a circle right i am going to take a circle right with center right so this is the constant swr circle right circle c is constant swr circle now this point is yl c is actually what yl maybe i should write those things now right i should write down those things and even when you are actually what doing it manually you should write down those things so this is a, c is actually what 
YL point. I'm not writing it here while because later on I'll have to extend it and all. So if I write here, then it's going to be actually what mess. So I'm writing it here on the right side. C is our YL point, right? Now what we should do is right from we should uh, right C, C is our YL point. Maybe I can take an right R can extend that. Maybe later on also I can do. So I'll I'll take a ray. Right. I'll take a ray. I'll just extend D and E so that it will intersect the distance toward uh, like generator somewhere. So this is actually what. Okay. Um, I should press control here. Yeah. So this much time on. Right. Now, this is what first step is done. And first step actually what we are marked in switch chart. Then let us see what is the next step. Right. Step two is actually what finding YD. Right. Step two is. Find. YD. Right. Step two is find YD. How to find YD? To find YD. Right. I'll just uh, write. Right. And to find YD, draw SWR circle that we have already done. Draw SWR circle. Right. Move from load and right. Move from load and towards generator. Right, move from load and towards generator. Right, and say uh, find the point. Right, I'll am right. Find the point. Point uh, of intersection. With say uh, G equal to one circle, right? When I say the nearest point, nearest point to the load, right? I know you didn't understand anything, right? But this is the second step, right? And why are we doing this? You may not have understood, right? So what we should do is, right? I'll just draw a, a, a sample switch chart here, right? So I have this R equal to zero circle. Right, and uh, we have located the uh, point, and I have drawn actually what this is the constant SWR circle, and we have this. Right, we have this. Right, uh, uh, G equal to one circle. This is G equal to one circle. Right. So what we should do is right. I'll mark. This is the load point. This is actually what YL. From la YL, I should travel along the. Uh, Constant SWR circle and find the point where it intersects with actually what? Find the point where it intersects with. So this is actually what? G equal to one circle. G equal to one circle. So uh, okay. Uh, this is G equal to one circle, right? So from load and I should travel in clockwise sense or towards the generator along the SWR point and I should find the point of intersection of SWR circle with G equal to one circle. That point is equal to YD. Right. I'll repeat what I have to do. Right. Once the SWR circle is plotted, right, you should travel from the load end towards the generator. That is actually in clockwise sense. Even if it is in, in admittance chart, towards generator means clockwise. Only short circuit and open circuit point will change. So this will be short circuit point and this will be open circuit point in admittance chart. Right. In admittance chart. Right. But uh, Towards the generator means clockwise. So we should move clockwise right towards the generator. So I'll write here actually what towards generator clockwise. I'll write right and find the point of intersection with G equal to one circle. So it intersects actually what a two point G equal to one circle. It actually what intersects a two point. See if this is G equal to one circle, right? So many point it will intersect, but the nearest point is what we have to find out. So that's what we are going to do now, right? So I'll just go to switch chart right now. This is the ID point and which one is G equal to one circle. This is G equal to one circle. Right. This is G equal to one circle. Right. 
so should i mark g equal to one circle okay i'll mark g equal to one circle i don't want to mark uh, much things right here so so at least say this is g equal to one circle right this is g equal to one circle so it intersects the uh, swr circle actually what intersects the g equal to one circle at this point and at this point right but when we are moving from uh, moving towards the generator that is in clockwise this point will come first this point will come first so i'll mark that point right i'll mark that point that will be our yd so there is a reason why we are doing that i'll explain it later right so this is our yd this point is our yd right all of you understood how to find yd so this point e is our yd now oh again i made a mistake by not choosing the pen right all of you understood how to find yd this is a second step right why that should be yd that is the next question right all of you understood so this e is our actually what e is our yd now right now yd we have can we try and find out what is that yd i'll just zoom in and try to find out what is that yd now before that i should select the move tool right i'll move it up a bit and then zoom right if i move that much and zoom then it will be a problem right of course the g value will be right g value will be 1 right so this is our point uh, yd right i'll mark it uh, here e is our yd and the g value of yd will be what will be g value of yd that is equal to 1 already we marked it on actually what equal to 1 so this is our yd right e it is actually what yd and it has g value equal to 1 and what will be the what is the b value here b value you can see this is 2 this is 3 2.2 2.4 2.6 2.8 so it's between 2.6 and 2.8 so b value is 2.7 right b value is 2.7 so i'll write yd is equal to 1 minus or plus it's minus or plus can anyone tell me below the horizontal axis minus it's minus so 1 minus j 2.7 this is our yd now we got yd right 1 minus j 2.7 right so yd is 1 minus j 2.7 so we located yd right so point e is our yd and that is 1 minus j 2 actually when you are doing right you should actually what mark here only right but as i have to do uh, further things i am not marking it and actually what making a fuss that's why i am writing it on the right hand side right so the point c is y l point e is y d so now again i'll go back to my note right i'll go back to my note right so we found actually what y d is equal to we found y d is equal to 1 minus j 2.7 so we found y d is equal to 1 minus j 2.7 right but uh, as per your textbook actually it is 2.6 but not a problem now we got 2.7 so we'll keep it 2.7 only right so y d we got to be equal to 2.7 right y d we got to be equal to 2.7 so that that is step 2 step 2 successfully completed then step 3 is step 3 is actually what compute ys compute ys right so which is the governing equation right the governing equation is right y11 into y not right this is equal to right y11 into y not this is equal to right um say yd into y not plus ys into y not s so this y not will be equal to actually what 1 by 50 and y not s is equal to 1 by 100 why because z not is 50 and z not s is 100 so y not will be 1 by 50 y not s will be 1 by 100 right and this should be equal to y not right this should be equal to y not right this is the uh, this should be equal to y not that is the case right so but uh, from this can we try and find out what is y s right from this we'll try and find out what is y s right so uh this y11 should be equal to actually what 
y11 should be equal to 1 right or from this we can try and find out what is y s right so this y11 has to be equal to 1 if y11 into y0 has to be equal to y0 y11 has to be equal to 1 y11 is 1 so please do keep this in mind right so from this part of the relation i am going to find out what is ys right how you will find out ys so i can write ys into y not s will be actually what uh see y not minus yd into y not right that is uh 1 minus yd times y not this is ys into y not s right and what will be ys then ys will be equal to 1 minus yd into y not by y not s and yd we already know what is the value of yd can anyone tell me just now we found so it is 1 minus it was 1 minus j 2.7 right 1 minus j 2.7 right Into y not is one by fifty. Y not is one by fifty. Y not is one by fifty, and y not is is equal to one by hundred. Right. This is actually what one by z not. This is one by z not s. So this is hundred by fifty. So what we'll get? Right. We'll just try and find out. So the one and one will get cancelled. So what we will get is it is equal to y s is equal to plus j 2.7 into 2. So that is plus j 5.4. This is y s, right? What actually is y s? What is this y s? What is this y s? It's nothing but what normalized admittance of the step, right? So y s is nothing but what now we found out normalized admittance of the step, right? Y S is nothing but normalized admittance of the step, right? That we found out, right? We found out Y S is equal to J five point four, or I can write Y S is equal to zero plus J five point four, which means G value is equal to zero and B value equal to plus five point four, right? G value is equal to zero and B value is equal to plus five point four. right so can we mark this right can we mark this ys on smith chart now right which will be that 0 plus 5.4 point right so re right i should take the move option and then right anyway i'll just make this recording available you can watch it again and again and again right so R equal to zero is outermost circle. If you remember, R equal to zero is outermost circle. So this is R equal to zero circle, right? The outermost one is R equal to zero circle, and we can see uh, R equal. So it that point will be on the outermost circle. So or else I'll draw here, right? I'll draw here. That point will be on the outermost circle. So this is G equal to zero circle. So it will be on that. Right, somewhere around the circle, somewhere here, right? With x equal to b equal to point four, right? If this is b equal to uh, sorry five point four, that will be the point, right? So I repeat, right? So the point will be there on the outermost circle, r equal to constant circle. So this is three, this is five, five point two, five point four. So five point four is here. So I am going to mark that point, right? I am going to mark that point zero plus j five point four is This five, sorry, not that five. This is five, six, seven, eight. So this is five, and this is ten. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So five point five will be here. Five point four will be slightly above that. Right. Five point four will be slightly above that. So I am marking five point four there. Right. The point F was actually what Y S now. Right. Point F was Y S. Point F is Y S that is equal to what zero plus J five point four. Right. Only this much we have to do. Right. Only this much we have to do. Then it's about actually what finding distances. Right. Now we have everything. 
right oh, ys is there right yd is there now right so fs ys so till here is it clear right maybe the procedure if, if it is clear i'll repeat everything what we did is initially we found the normalized admittance point c right so maybe now i can mark here right the normalized admittance point so this is actually what c is yl right then we draw the constant swr circle and from constant swr circle we move along the towards the generator right to find the point where the swr circle first intersects with r equal to 1 uh, uh, g equal to 1 circle so this is actually what constant swr circle i'll i'll draw here swr circle oh, sorry and this circle is actually what g equal to one circle and this point point e is nothing but what that is nothing but yd point e is nothing but yd e is nothing but yd so we got yd and using yd then what we did using yd we calculated ys point f was actually what ys point f was ys we calculated uh, ys now now what we need to do is we need to find this d and we need to find l right so we'll just go to our problem and find out what is d and l actually right what is d and l if you go to our problem right d is nothing but what so if from load end from load end right how much should i travel to the point 1 right how much should i travel to the point 1 1 or how much should i travel to the point zd right or yd right that is actually d right so d is nothing but what i'll i'll uh, find i'll write the next step right so step 3 we found ys right step 4 is actually what step 4 find small d and small l right find small d and small l i am writing it together right so d is actually what d is distance from load end distance from load end towards point say um yd right d is nothing but distance from load and towards point yd so we can find out load and towards point yd right in flow wise right so uh, if you see this uh, transmission line again to reach uh, the point the, to reach yd right to reach yd from load and we should travel towards generator right which means you should travel in clockwise sense right which should travel which means we should travel in clockwise sense right so that's how you can find d then what actually is this l right l it is nothing but what you have a short circuited end so this is one transmission line and this is actually what a separate transmission line right right so for a separate transmission line you have a short circuit end right you have a short circuit end from short circuit end how much distance you should travel towards the generator to find an admittance of ys i i'll repeat l is nothing but what from short circuit end how much distance you should travel towards generate generator to find an admittance of ys right so i'll write here right i'll write here please note it down right l is distance from short circuit n right towards when i should say the shortest distance right this is also shortest distance right this is also shortest and this is also shortest distance what we have first value is what we have to consider shortest distance towards generator to reach 
y s right so that is l and that is d right so d is actually what from load and how much should i travel to reach y d right and l is from short circuit and how much should i travel towards generator to reach y s shall you try and find out that you should help me in that right so this is our load end right from load end this is y d so what i'll do is i'll take another ray i'll take another ray right and uh i'll mark right join this and the load end right uh, sorry y d right the point corresponding to y d right so that will be one thing right and i'll mark short circuit point now right i'll mark which which one is short circuit point extreme right one or left one so this is short circuit point now right this is short circuit point right so i'll mark d and l here now please uh, wait so d and l i'll mark right i'll take a pen right d and l are nothing but what from c how much should i travel to reach the point y d so this is actually what this must be d right that this is d right and l is nothing but from short circuit point how much should i travel towards generator so short circuit point here from short circuit point how much should i travel towards generator to reach the point f right that is y s so can i travel in anti clockwise sense no i cannot travel in clockwise anti clockwise sense right i should travel in clockwise sense right so i'll mark l now so from here right from here for me to reach y s what i should do is i should travel see this much this much i should travel so before that i should draw a line for uh, this um y s as well i should draw a line for this y s as well so i should draw a line for this so i will just right take a ray from d towards through f i'll draw a line so that will give me actually what the a position of y s right so what actually is l l i will tell right so i'll just zoom it out a bit so these i should zoom it out right for the zoom it out right so l is actually what from the short circuit end so this is short circuit end right from short circuit end how much should i travel towards the generator to reach the point f right so this is actually what l right so this is l that l will be what nothing but 0.5 minus this much distance right 0.5 minus this much distance so we have to find out that can you help me find out that right first we will try and find out d right first we will try and find out d right d is right for that i should maybe i should move it up a bit and then zoom right i am moving it up a bit and then i am zooming right yeah so you can see right the point c it intersects the distance towards load at, at which point it is intersecting i may have to move it right so this is if you see distance towards load right so this is point 21 and this is point 22 right so it's between point 212 214 216 and it's it is between 216 and 218 right so i think it is 2162 right so i'll call it actually what d load i'll call dl right dl that is actually what 0.2163 or 216 i'll mark d1 is 0.216 i'll mark right then what is this value this is actually what 0.29 0.3 so it's between 0.3 and 0.32 so it is 0.31 right so i'll mark d subscript d that is actually what 0.32 i'll mark d subscript d as 0.32 right i mark d subscript d so that is actually what the this circle i have to see distance towards generator we have already uh, seen that that's why i'm not explaining it again so d d is 0.216 lambda right d l uh, sorry d l is 0.216 lambda d d is 0.32 lambda so what is the how much distance should i travel from 0.216 to 0.32 
now we can write what is i'll write here right so d is equal to d is equal to say 0.32 minus 0.216 this much times lambda so can anyone tell me what is this 0.32 minus 0.216 0.104 0.104 0.104 lambda right yes sir 0.104 lambda so this is actually what the position of the step so i should travel 1.104 lambda from the load end right so there i should pause the step right now i should find right what is the distance l right to find l again i'll just uh what to move right and then we'll zoom right i think i can zoom right i have zoomed in right so it's actually what from short circuit end i should uh one rotation i should do and i should reach here right so i should call it actually dsc i can call right maybe the short circuit point the distance dsc that will be 0.25 i can write right dsc i can write 0.25 or else this distance also i i should actually what find i can find this distance g to f in anti clockwise and subtract right so this distance if i can find out right this is 0.25 right or else maybe we can find this much is actually what one half circle is 0.25 and from extreme point to this it is equal to actually what point 22 right so this f is passing through point 22 i think right so one half circle plus 1.22 right i'll just zoom out and show from point g to f i should travel one complete half circle that is actually equal into point 25 lambda then i should travel from here 0 to point 22 lambda right point 22 lambda so this l will be equal to actually what point 25 plus Point two two, L will be equal to point two five plus point two two lambda. That is one way. So one way to calculate L is say, uh, but I'll mark here. This F was actually what this is corresponding to. Uh, right, this F, that point is actually what this is. D uh, D what uh, okay D F file right. D F was equal to actually what zero point. 22 lambda 0.22 lambda right df is 0.22 lambda uh, so now from here till here so from here till here it is actually what 0.25 right and from here till here it is actually what 0.22 so the total distance is 0.25 plus 0.22 right that is one way of calculating right so i'll i'll write it down here right so l is equal to Right, either 0.25 plus 0.22 lambda. So what is this? It will be 0.47, right? Yes, sir. 0.47 lambda. So this is yes, one sir. way, right? Way one to find out L, right? So way two would be, right? Way two would be I know one complete circle is 0.5 lambda. One complete circle is 0.5 lambda. So from that, if I subtract this much. right if i subtract this much right uh, how to find that much value so if i so if i take distance towards generator distance towards load right so this is actually what zero so if i find out this i can if you right you can just try it out i am not actually what doing that right so that will be somewhere equal to actually what 0.03 right that will be equal to 0.03 so another way right so that is this distance this distance is 0.03 right so from this point to this this distance is 0.03 right so then the uh, the counter part of the circle will be actually what 0.5 minus 0.03 so that is also one way right that is also another way so i'll write it here way 2 is actually what l is equal to 0.5 minus 0.03 this much lambda right so that again you will get 0.47 lambda so we got d is equal to 0.014 lambda and uh, say 
L is equal to 0.47 lambda. That's it. Right. That's it. Our impedance matching problem is done. Right. Impedance matching problem is done. We had to find what was the question? We had to find D and L. Right. So maybe I I am not using the same thing again. I'll draw once again here. Right. Right, this is ZL. Right. So R D is actually what? D is what was D? Sorry, I, I missed out. I forgot. D is equal to 0 0.104 lambda. Yes, sir. 0 0.104 lambda. So from load end at a distance of 0 0.104 lambda, I should connect a short circuited step. Right. Now length of that short circuited step should be right. Length of that short circuited step should be I'm drawing it here. Right, I'm drawing it here. Right, what is the length of that short circuited step? Right, so length of the short circuited step was right. This length is equal to right. This length is equal to how much is the length? 0 0.47 lambda. This length is 47 lambda. That's it. So Right. If you connect a short circuited step, right. So this has a characteristic impedance Z O S to be equal to 100 ohm. Right. This has a characteristic impedance Z O is equal to 100 ohm. This has a characteristic impedance Z O is equal to 50 ohm. Right. Right. And the Z L is also given. So in order to match this load at any given lambda, what you should do is you should connect a short circuited step of length 0.47 lambda. So you take a Transmission line, short circuit the one end and other end you connect actually what at a distance of D 0 0.104 lambda. Right. So that as seen from here, right, the impedance will be equal to Z0 or 50 ohm. So after this point, there won't be any reflection. Right. So here, no reflection, no reflection. Right. So whatever is power delivered till here, that will be passed. Right. No reflection is there. So this is how you will do impedance matching. Now the question is, right, why, how are we finding this point YD? Right. YD or this capital YD should be some point whose real part is actually what, whose real part should be Y0. And imaginary part can be something. Right. Say, uh, J. Something right, J, um, B, or something, right? Whatever, right? So, this real part should be equal to Y0, right? So, real part should be equal to Y0, right? So, for YD, the real part should be equal to Y0, so that Y11 that is actually what YD plus YS, if it has to be equal to Y0, what I should do is I should choose this YS to be equal to actually what minus JB, right? If I choose, so first, if I choose YD to be equal to some admittance whose real part is characteristic admittance, then I can satisfy this simply by actually what choosing Y has to be equal to what minus JB, right? So what will happen? Y naught plus JB minus JB, it will get cancelled. JB and minus JB will get cancelled. So I'll get actually what Y naught. So what are we doing is what what actually we are doing is right we are moving along the transmission line and trying to find out the point the impedance point where the real part is equal to characteristic impedance right so we are moving along the transmission line and the point one one or yd or whatever this point one one is chosen such that right at one 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 the real part of z should be equal to Z0. This is the idea, right? So that, right, uh, real part of, right, real part of, so not, not real part of Z should be, yeah, anyway, anyway, it is fine. If real part of Z is equal to Z0, right, real part of Y also will be equal to Y0, right? Uh, so real part of Z will be equal to actually what? Z0, right, real part of 
z will be equal to z not or real part of y will be equal to y not so that this ys can be found out easily ys should be actually what minus jb now shall we just list down what are the values we got right yl was quickly yl was 2 plus j 3.723 right or 3.732 or whatever right what was yd yd was 1 j 2.7 what you should keep in mind is always the real part of yd will be 1 or the real part of capital y d should be equal to y not that is something which you have to keep in mind why are we doing that right so that right so that y s is right here i can't choose y s is equal to minus plus j 2.7 because right there are two cases y s is actually what uh, plus j 5.4 why because there are two cases those two cases i'll discuss and we'll wind up right so case 1 is case 1 is z not equal to z not s which implies y not is equal to y not s right so which will simplify our expression right that is y not is equal to right y not is equal to yd into y not plus sorry uh, ys into y not right so y not s this y not s is actually what y not so what we will get right we will get y s is equal to 1 minus y d we will get right so in first case y s will be if z not is equal to z uh, sorry uh, z not is equal to z step z not of step right if not right if case 2 is if z not is not equal to z not of step then what we will get we will get for this is we will get ys is equal to 1 minus yd into y not by y not s or 1 minus yd into z not s by z not this is case 2 the problem which we have solved is actually from belong to case 2 right otherwise what we would have done is directly we would have chosen the uh, chosen y is to be equal to actually what y is to be equal to plus j.27 but it is not possible why because our line and step both have different characteristic impedance right so i think that is clear right i think that is clear so once again a quick revision within one minute i mark the Uh, first step is uh, marking the characteristic admittance point then drawing constant standing wave ratio circle then find yd right then we found yd so from yd we found ys right from yd we found ys so the general equation for ys is ys is equal to 1 minus yd into y not by y not s right so so from yd we found ys right so given yd and ys the next part is just calculating distance right so the distance d is nothing but what the distance from load point to yd right distance d is nothing but distance from load point to yd and distance l is nothing but distance from the short circuited point to from short circuited point to this uh, ys right distance from short circuited point to ys why short circuited point to ys why because for this particular line short circuited line right the load is actually not short short circuited right admittance actually what this admittance for this yl not will be equal to right uh, short circuited means uh, g will be infinity right so yl not will be equal to infinity right or z will be equal to zl not will be equal to actually what zero right so yl not will be equal to infinity right so that is why from short circuit point we are seeing how much we have to travel towards the generator right so from here this is actually what towards the generator only to get this particular admittance ys right from short circuit point how much should i travel to get this particular point ys so that is why we are calculating the uh, l as actually what distance from short circuit point to ys 
so i hope it is clear now i would like to hear from you even though it is uh, i one but uh, this is as this is very crucial right i need uh, to clear your doubts right is it is it okay is it clear uh, please um, tell me this is very very important this is the last topic of transmission line then that is done right and uh, i'll uh, post other sold out examples in uh, canvas right i think i have already posted right i have already posted the other sold out example right so this is right so um, the procedure you should remember that's it right i'll quickly repeat once again right first find the admittance uh, normalized admittance point then uh, find yd yd is actually what the point where cosine of sw circle intersects with g equal to 1 circle right then if you know yd you can find ys as actually what 1 minus yd into y not divided by y not s right then given yd and y ys find the distance d and distance l right that's it so this is the uh, most complicated problem you may get right other problems may be what simpler pro pro problems may be actually what z not is equal to z not s both the line and the step will have same characteristic impedance then the problem will be easier right so i think that's it right so we are going to say bye bye to smith chart for the time being right so if you have any doubt we can uh, right uh, take it up later right so bye bye smith chart right so let's hope we will get a question this time for university exam right for sure right so uh, that's it if you have any doubts please feel free to ask please feel free to ask your doubt saurav you had any uh, okay yeah. fine yeah um, if any any doubt any doubt please feel free to ask right or else please type no doubt everything is clear right so it's it's very very important topic very very important topic right which are for internal exam i can't ask you to what if whether all of you can take a print out if you can take a print out of smith chart i could have directly asked the question right no sir it's not possible right then what i'll do is i'll actually what uh, give you smith chart in question paper and i'll mark the relevant things there from that you will have to identify the things right so it's not going to be the way how questions will be asked in university exam but because of this pandemic issue right no other go right so that's it so uh, okay you don't have to take a print out right you don't have to take a print out and i am not asking you to use geogebra also so those who don't have laptop maybe it, it may be difficult to use geogebra right but now, instead of that what i'll do is i'll mark the relevant things on smith chart right with the smith chart right i'll mark uh, this um, yd ys and all those things with that i'll ask some questions of course it's not going to be pattern right shervin uh, pattern uh, i I'll, i'll tell you later shervin right still i am actually what uh, preparing the uh, question paper right i i didn't finish preparing the question paper right so even i had the same issue i was thinking how to ask questions on smith chart right i can't skip questions on smith chart right important questions i'll get right important questions i almost all the questions in quiz right are important questions right okay okay oh, yeah sorry yeah yeah uh, i think that's it that's my baby crying please excuse right yeah saven you remember right i told no no <laughs> even during our uh, project evaluation she was uh, she was doing something so i was telling her no no i forgot to mute my mic right yes i, th I think that was the no no which you typed right seven yes yeah that's it please please feel free to ask any doubt why right? because it's very very important question right very very important question very very important topic so with that we'll say bye bye to our transmission line we didn't skip anything we uh, covered everything right i think that's it so maybe we'll wind up thank you so much for joining today you don't have to uh, type in your usn i have used actually what this you might have seen here right this 
um, Google uh, Meet attendance extension. So I can see what happens in between. So for instance, Saurav actually had some network issues. So he left in between and just then joined back. Namita also had some network issue, I think. So, so she was either um, because of network issue or like left and joined back in between or whatever. Fine. So okay. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Bye. So that's it. All of you can leave. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah.